Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head over to California in America once again, and we're going to revisit a brewery that I haven't tasted anything from in about two years, and it's actually been about four years since I did my last dedicated review to this brewery, but I know they do some pretty damn awesome stuff. I really enjoyed the last beer that I had from them. So for this one, we're going to go back to Paso Robles, which is of course home to Firestone Walker Brewing Company, and we're going to have a look at one of the beers in their proprietor vintage range which again is my first taste of a beer in this series so this is the 2018 vintage of the sticky monkey um, and it's described as a central coast quad and I was thinking about this when I saw it come through the small partiers and um, I've never actually had an American brewed quadruple so I thought this would be one that would be very interesting to try so it comes in at 11.4% uh, it's a 355 milliliter bottle and like I said it is one of the proprietors vintage series from uh, from Firestone Walker so it should be a really really awesome beer. This one has a very high rating when you check it out on the likes of um, Beer Advocate, Rate Beer, Untapped and things like that. It's a style that I very, very much enjoy as well. For me, when it comes to Belgian beers, it's all about the blondes, the uh, the tripels and the quadrupels. And, you know, if you find a good one that's brewed outside of Belgium, it is, uh, you know, it, it's always an interesting find, actually. The Belgian beers are, are really pretty damn awesome, I have to say. And there's a lot of influence from Belgium these days because of all the sour beer breweries that are taking off. And, of course, Firestone Walker do have their own little uh, kind of share of that market if you like but very much looking forward to trying this one this was released through the small partiers in say simple on the 5th of march 2019 if i'm remembering the date correctly and uh, i hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer it's cool to return to firestone walker after such a long time so anyway as is usual with my reviews then i'll tell you a little bit about the brewery if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that i've done from firestone walker before hopefully i can add some more in the near future it will definitely not be four years before i review another beer from them there's all the usual social media if you want to see more beer reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country city state county prefecture or whatever it is you're interested in do check out the playlists of beers from different countries there is one there for all the american beers that i've reviewed for you that's constantly being added to and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review it's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated so anyway to tell you a little bit about Firestone Walker then so Firestone Walker were founded back in 1996 and they're based in Paso Robles and also in Bulletin in uh, California as well or Buellton if I'm not pronouncing that correctly but the company was founded by two brothers-in-law this was Adam Firestone who is the son of Brooks Firestone a local politician and also David Walker who had studied brewing at the University of California at Davis but they expanded their infrastructure that they had early on with the purchase of the SLO brewery in Paso Robles and they also brewed nectar ales for a while after buying the company in 2005 but they later sold this on to Total Beverage Solutions in 2012 and the company then reverted to its original name of Humboldt Brewing Company after that sale and um, but apparently the oaky taste that you often uh, get in these beers the Firestone Walker beers were always known for their very oaky taste this was due to the use of oak and casks for, fit for uh, the fermentation process in their early productions. So they continue to use a Burton Union fermentation system which, where they use these oak barrels and they're one of only two breweries in the world to use this. This was apparently um, developed back in England in the 1830s and it's basically a series of oak casks connected to a common trough connected by a series of pipes and it allows the yeast foam to be expelled without leaving huge amounts of head foam and it also has uh, a system to separate expelled beer from the foam and return it to the casks as well. So it's a very uh, clever system actually and as I say one of the only two breweries in the world that are apparently still using this. But in 2012 they opened up their sour beer facility in Bulton in California. This is known as Barrel Works and then later in 2015 uh, Firestone Walker was bought over by Duvel Murkgaard from the uh, the Netherlands who are of course known for their uh, strong blonde Belgian beer that they do and of course they've got other things in there as well but another family owned company um, buying over this one. But it seems to be, from what they're saying on the Firestone Walker website, it does seem to be a little bit more like a partnership. I know that um, Adam Firestone 
and David Walker are apparently still quite heavily involved in the company too. So that's always cool to see that um, even though you know there has been a, a purchase or whatever going on or a partnership formed, that the original guys are still involved in the brewery. And I do know that the uh, the Firestone Walker production um, has gone up considerably. They started canning their beers as well, I think back in 2015 as well. And we started, I remember when I first moved to Sweden, we started to get more of the, the Firestone Walker beers over here as well, which was pretty cool. I think that's when Seastem Bulaget actually started picking them up uh, for the small partiers as well. But yeah, um, as I say, a very, very interesting brewery. This one using some really old kind of brewing techniques, which I think is uh, is pretty damn awesome as well. And they're known for their, their kind of barrel-aged beers, if you like, as well. A little bit like Innocent Gun back in Scotland, I guess you could say. But um, yeah, that's all you really need to know about the brewery for the moment. Uh, I think as of 2014, they had produced, they were producing something like 150,000 US barrels of beer. So they are a fairly big production volume these days. And they do have the They've got the Lion and the Bear series, they've got the um, this one which is the Proprietor's Vintage series and they do have another beer, the Barrel Works series I think, which is their sour beers obviously. But yeah, that's all you really need to know about the brewery just now. If you want to learn a little bit more you can check out the brewery website in the description below and of course you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram and things like that to keep up to date with all the latest goings on there. But yeah, just to give you a few more stats on this beer, as I mentioned at the start of the video this one is an 11.4% quadruple, it's part of the Proprietor's Vintage series and it's a part named after the Californian Central Coast Sticky Monkey Flower um, and this one's hopped with Styrian Goldings of course from Slovenia and has a malt base of Turo Munich Caramel, Torrified Wheat, Belgian Candy Sugar, Brown Sugar and also some Roast Barley as well. So I think this one by the sounds of it will be an absolute monster of a beer. So yeah let's get rid of the brewery notes just now and we can have a taste of this one for ourselves and see how we got on. I'll just let you have a little look at the, the artwork on the box on this one once again. There you can see a um, really nicely presented beer. If I bring it up a little bit closer, you can see the Firestone Walker symbol. Um, that, of course, you can see the lion there. You can also see the um, the bear. And that, as I say, that's the for their kind of um, core range, if you like, um, the lion and the bear. Um, is that you know that's the name of the core range of beer that they have. It says on the back here, a brewery began in 1996 when we delved into the rare art of fermenting beer in oak barrels. Ten years later, we took our barrel uh, machinations to the next level by aging beer in vessels inherited from bourbon houses and other spirit producers. Ever since, the resulting beers have flown under the banner of the proprietor's vintage series, which has become one of the most extensive barrel aging programs in the craft industry. Sticky Monkey is meticulously brewed with Belgian candy sugar in the classic quadruple manner, then aged for more than a year in return tired bourbon barrels to create a stylistic outliner that we have called a central coast quad because these guys are pretty much a uh, Paso Robles is essentially right in the middle of um, of California between uh, Los Angeles and um in the Bay Area, if you like, San Francisco, San Jose and things like that. So they've called it the Central Coast Quad. Uh, but the result is a beer that offers a profound molasses flavour with notes of toasted oak, coconut, leather and cigar tobacco. The name Sticky Monkey is a nod to the native Sticky Monkey flower that thrives in the mountains along California's Central Coast, as well as a homage to the Belgian monks who pioneered the quadruple style. Enjoy this beer now or cellar it in a cool dark place between 45 degrees Fahrenheit and 55 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know what that is in real people temperatures, but allow it to warm up in the glass when serving and cellar it in a cool dark place. And it's got the signatures of Adam Firestone on the back, Matt um, uh, Brunidston, who is the, the, the brewmaster there, and also David Walker as well. I'll just let you have a little look at that on the camera too before we open up. There you go. So let the camera focus, but yeah, nicely presented beer, that is the top of the box. So without further ado, let's get this guy out and we will get on with the tasting. And let me just see if we can open this up. Oh. If it wants to come out, actually that'll be the, the next thing, there we go. So yeah, it's got one of these little protectors there which is nice. But um, yeah, that looks pretty cool I have to say. So. Um, yeah, the standard kind of 355 milliliter bottle with this one. Then it's actually it's obviously been opened up, um, or they've put the bo they've sent the boxes over separately, and then it's been boxed like that. Because you can see we've got the Swedish import sticker on uh, on the back there, which is kind of cool. But yeah, nicely presented beer. This one tells you about all the different things in the air. It should have 31 IBUs in it. So um, yeah, looks lovely. And um, there you can see the beer on the bottle cap of this one. I think you get lion and beer. Um, bottle caps depending on what beer you've got 
but yeah, nice little top label as well. The artwork on this one, you know, pretty nice. Uh, and as I say, the, it's you know this is pretty standard um, for what you get from the bottles on uh, from Firestone Walker. I remember the one um, was it, I can't remember what the name was a Double Jack or something that I had before. But um, yeah, they retired a good couple of beers and they've brought new ones out and things like that. Um, but yeah, it looks absolutely lovely. So without further ado, then let's get this guy out and we will get on with the tasting. So um, so yeah. Very curious about this. Oh, that looks really nice. So yeah, let's get this guy out. You can smell some of these lovely brown sugar notes coming out of the beer as well. It's also nice. I've just noticed on the back that it says... Uh, Spendrup's Bregery. I hope it, I don't know if it's been brewed at Spendrup's Bregery because it has the um, yeah it does say on the bottle that it's it, this must have just been imported by Spendrup's or something like that because uh, yeah it does say it's brewed in America so yeah so I was just wondering about that there when it had the the sticker on the inside of that that's quite unusual from what I gather because I wouldn't have thought they'd want to open things up like that they put the import sticker on the outside or something like this but um, yeah I guess they've got to inspect the bottles but look at this this beer. If you hold this up to the light, I don't know how well you're going to see this on the camera, but this is a lovely, very dark, almost ebony, ruby type colour. It's a really, really dark ruby colour, this one. You could see there was about a quarter finger of a frothy, I would say, kind of um, medium beige head on this one when we open it up. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and a few little ones heading up towards the uh, the bottom of the head there but you know overall it does look um, very very nice so yeah nothing overly surprising about this one in terms of its appearance but I do have to say this one is one of the darker <coughs> quadruples that I've come across I don't know if that's just because of the barrel aging or because of the malt base and of course you can do lots of things to darken up the malt base you know you can do a longer brew which makes the sugars caramelize a little bit more you can use different types of malts and stuff like that um, but yeah, it, it's really interesting. As I say, this is definitely one of the darker um, quadruple style beers that I've come across. But it looks absolutely lovely. And when you open this one up, you do get this lovely oaky um, brown sugar note out of it. So yeah, uh, nothing surprising about this one, particularly in terms of appearance. Just a little bit darker in comparison to some of the other ones that I've had. So let's have a closer look now at that aroma and just see how we get on. Oh... This beer is going to be beautiful. You can just tell from the aroma. You really can. So yeah, lovely, big brown sugary quality to this beer. Um, you really can pick out those brown, uh, th those big brown sugary notes to it. The treacle or molasses, as the Americans would say. I think they've done a fairly long boil on this beer just to kind of caramelise these sugars a little bit more. Because it does sound as if it, 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 or it does smell rather, um, as if it's a little bit kind of more well fired and things. I really like how um, how everything is going together in that in the brown sugar side of this malt base. There is a little bit of a kind of brown bready note to this one, um, but on top of that too, you're getting a nice kind of biscuity um, note to it as well. It does remind me a little bit of the McVitie's Digestive Biscuits. I think you can get those over in the States actually. Um, but with this one, um, it really does remind me of that almost corn syrupy thing that holds the McVitie's Digestive Biscuits together. It has that lovely kind of caramel wafery um, sort of sweetness to it. And that's on top of the slightly darker brown sugars, of course. You've got a lovely big woody note to this one as well, the oakiness. You can smell a little bit of vanilla coming out of here too. I would say, um, and it does, you know, it was saying on the, the um, box that it should have a leathery aroma, and you actually can pick that out in this one. I've never really been a great fan of saying that these beers have uh, leathery aromas and things like that, but um, yeah, it's a really lovely, it's a lovely aroma to this beer, actually. Someone's obviously coming home, um, but yeah, lovely, you know, lovely aroma to that. The woody notes are absolutely, you know, cracking on it, too. Um, I just I love how all this the whole aroma of this beer goes together. It's lovely and woody and uh, and just sticky. You can really th this beer I think is going to be an absolute um, beast of a brown sugar monster. Actually, I really love that about it. Um, 
Yeah, just as I always say, take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck in. You can pick out a little bit of a nice nutty aroma in there and that's working in well with these oaky vanilla qualities that the beer has. You can pick up a little bit of a grassy floral note from the hop, but that's quite minimal to be honest with you. You'd expect that from the quad. You know, the quadruple doesn't have all that much kind of hoppy quality to it, but you can also detect that there's just a little touch of that noble earthiness in there. The Slovenian hops, such as the Styrian Golding, um, that they have in this one, um, you know, it really does have a very similar quality to the German noble, hop, noble hops like the Hallertau and the Tettnangers and, uh, and stuff like this. It really has that quality, but there's a lot of nice red fruit to this beer as well. You've got, an, uh, uh, you've got a little bit of a kind of figgy note to it. It's got a little bit of a plummy raisin uh, character as well. In the beginning you get a little bit of a plum raisiny sharpness also which is very very nice. Um, but you've got some nice juicy figgy qualities. The further you go into the uh, the the aroma with this one you start to get the more juicy figgy um, blackberry sort of notes out of this which is really really nice. The aroma of this beer I have to say is absolutely beautiful and it's just making me more and more curious about it so I don't want to wait around too much longer to try this one. So yeah this one is the 2018 vintage of the Sticky Monkey from Firestone Walker Brewing Company over in Paso Robles in the central coast in California. Part of the small parties that we got through here in Sweden on the 5th of March 2019. Let's get stuck into this one then. Slandia, school. Cheers. That's a beautiful, beautiful beer. I really like how that one is, uh, how that one's going together. Yeah. You know, as I was saying, one of the things that I was very, very curious about with this beer, this is the first American brewed quadruple that I've um that I've tried and it really is pretty damn good. Um the mouthfeel I think is a little bit different. Um the Belgian ones I find are a little bit thicker and more oily. This one kinda um Interestingly enough, it has a little bit more of an almost English texture to it, which is really interesting. It's a little bit, it's almost just like the, the water um, is a little bit more minerally and things like that. And I think depending on where you are in California, you can get some very, very good um, sort of quality mountain water and things. And that's something that I'm particularly sensitive to being Scottish and I guess now Swedish as well a little bit. Um, so you really can taste in some of these beers when you get the quality water. We get it from the, with the beers here in Sweden that come from the north. You get it with the Icelandic beers and some of the Norwegian stuff as well. You can really tell when a beer has a little bit of mountain water in it. And this, of course, this brewery are located kind of right in the mountain ranges. So yeah, you can detect that kind of side of this um, of this beer, um, so it does. I would say it does feel a little bit lighter in the mouth feel compared with some of the Belgian brewed ones. But you know that takes nothing away from it at all. It's a beautiful beer. This. So let's just try and break this down. Then in the middle of your palate, you can feel there is a sort of grainy um, backbone to this beer. There is a little bit of a kind of roasted edge to this one. That will be the roasted barley base. I think you can really taste that, and it starts to come out more and more. And um, the further into the aftertaste you go. On top of that though I think there's a little bit of a kind of brown um, bready note but the roasty grainy qualities are still pushing their way out of this one. But yeah, you've got a lovely kind of, um, you've got a lovely, the, the way the brown sugars go together in this beer it's, it's difficult to kind of pinpoint where to start actually it's just really really nice and um, there's definitely a sort of treacly molasses quality to this beer and that's sitting there in the very very center of your palate and it has got a kind of well fired um, edge to it if you like in the very center of your tongue you've got a really nice um, slightly sweeter caramel note to it it's darker the brown sugar is a little bit darker the further out of your the from the middle of the palate that you go but in the very center of the tongue You've got a nice kind of lighter caramel quality to this one and it is very, very sweet actually. You can also detect little bits of biscuit 
in there too, which is really nice, like the kind of McVitie's digestive biscuits or a kind of caramel wafer, um, something like that. It's, it's got a lovely kind of balance to the, the malt base here. If you come further forward on your palate, that's where you start to get the kind of smooth, oaky, woody notes to this one. And it does have a little bit of that kind of bourbon uh, barrel edge to it. I've always found that the American bourbon whiskey is a lot sweeter than the, the Scotch whiskey that we have back at home. We get, I mean, you get citrusy ones, you get sweet ones, and you also get the smoky ones. But the American, just the way that the Americans do their bourbon whiskey, it's just, to me, it's, it's quite sugary, actually. But I can say the same about the craft beers that they take. Whenever you have a Scotch ale from, uh, from the American breweries, it's always a, a lot sweeter than the, the original ones that we have back home are. Um, and you, with this beer, in some ways, this one is a little bit sweeter than the... Um, than the original Belgian ones, but they've kept it quite close to the style. It's quite conservative, I think, if you like, in comparison to some of the other uh, American beers that I've, I've come across. But that doesn't mean that it lacks in flavour at all. This is a beautiful, beautiful beer, and do not get me wrong on that in the slightest. Um, it has a lot of lovely flavour to this, but you can. It is distinctly American, this one, just because of the way I think the brown sugars come out. But that said, it does have a lot of the qualities that you would want of a, a Belgian brewed quad as well. I think they've done a bloody good job of this, so yeah, big thumbs up to Firestone Walker eh, on this one. As I say, when you come further forward in the palate, you get those nice oaky, woody notes to the beer. And if you just go to the very centre of your tongue and then work your way forward, that's where you, when just in front of that, that's where you start to get the little nutty qualities out of the beer too. Yeah, it is nice. I mean, they were saying, um, as I mentioned earlier, they were saying that there's a little bit of a kind of leathery quality to this beer too. And you, I can get that. It comes out more in the aftertaste. You've seen how long it was since I took a sip of this beer. You start to get the leathery qualities to this one the further into the, uh, the aftertaste that you go. And the more you drink of this beer, I think the more that grainy base to the malt base starts to just fade away a little bit and the oaky vanilla woody qualities just push their way out that little bit more and um, again the hops are very mild on this one and that's you know with the belgian beer again that's what you'd expect you've got this nice little touch of noble earthiness in the back corners of your palate as you come further forward along the uh, the sides of your tongue um you've got a little touch of that kind of floral aromaticity there it's that that noble hop quality like i say the slovenian um, Styrian Goldings are very, very similar to the German Noble Hops and a lot of their qualities. And then round the very front curve of the palate, you've got a lighter sort of uh, grassy note in there and behind the front curve of the tongue, that's where you get that lovely um, oily bubble where the juicy, fruity qualities come out of the beer as well. So yeah, the hops are nice and light, um, but the malt base is really where the big focus of this beer really sh uh, should be, of course. Yeah. So on the fruity side of things then, uh, for me, this one, I would say this beer almost has a little touch of an alcoholic cakey quality towards the front of the palate too, um, which is quite interesting. It doesn't have some of the phenolic qualities that you can sometimes get from the Belgian Bruins and the, the Belgian Dubels. This one definitely has a very kind of straight up red fruity quality to it. There's not really much in the way of a kind of plummy sharpness or a raisiny sharpness to this one. To me, this one's more a kind of datey, sort of, probably more figs actually that's coming out of this one. It's figs, it's sort of candied strawberries. There's a little touch of a kind of blackberry, blackcurrant um, quality to this one for, uh, for me as well. I really like how these fruity qualities come out. And the further you go into the aftertaste with this one, the more and more you actually get out uh, in terms of the, the juicy fruit notes. It's a beautiful beer, this one, and it's one that you really just need to have a go at for yourself and see what you think. But the barrel aging on this has obviously um, worked uh, wonders. I think they've done a, a really uh, damn nice job of this. So as I said earlier, a big thumbs up to um, to Firestone Walker on this one. If I compare it to the Belgian quads, just the way the brown sugars come out is a little bit different. And as I said earlier, the mouthfeel is a little bit more almost kind of mountainous if you like. You can feel with this one, you can pick out that the water in this beer is playing a significant role. It just has a little minerally feel to it, which is quite interesting. So yeah, um, in terms of that mouthfeel then, I would say this is a full-bodied beer. Carbonation is very, very smooth. The mouthfeel, of course, is completely on the oily side of the spectrum. It's a huge, kind of big, oily, sticky beer. This The malt base is beautiful, really leaning towards the sweet side of things. 
in the early stages of this beer before your palate just you will get a little touch of a grainy note to this one and almost kind of well fired quality to the beer um, but you've got a nice kind of woody smoothness to it as well so you've got sweetness smoothness and also just a little tiny touch of a roasty quality in there also but you've got a nice kind of um, Flor, uh, sort of uh, hoppy quality to the beer as well. It's, it's, as I said, it, you know, the 30 IBUs, I think it was 31 they said on the bottle, um, it really does have just a nice kind of hoppy smoothness to it. It gives the beer just a little bit more freshness, I would say, as well. Um, and the further you go into this one as well, the more smooth it gets. You get start to get some of these leathery flavours that they were talking about on the, um, the palate there as well. I'm not getting the tobacco so much, but then I've never smoked in my life, so I wouldn't know exactly what um, tobacco tastes like, to be honest. But you've got a lovely juicy fruity quality to this beer also so yeah just um you know this beer is really really top class and i've heard very very good things about this series and you know it really it has lived up to it so if you get the chance to try this one for yourself uh, just have a go at it and see what you think i think i paid somewhere in the region of a um, hundred crowns uh, for this particular beer and I th you know it was one of these ones I just thought you know stuff it why not have a go at it so I mean a hundred crowns is somewhere in the region of eight British pounds uh, like probably you know nine ten euros something like that um, but yeah I don't regret that it's a more expensive beer to buy it is a bit of a treat but you know if you can't treat yourself every so often in life, what's the hell, what the hell is the point? Um, but yeah, at eleven point four percent, it covers its alcohol very well as well. It's got that lovely sweet quality in there, which um, which covers the alcohol beautifully, and it's it's easy to drink. This one, um, a quad, of course, shouldn't be too easy to drink, um, but this one just has the right le right level of drinkability to it. And as I say, the difference with the mouthfeel for me. Is that little bit of minerally quality that you get from the the Californian water here? But um, yeah, a beautiful beer this, and I'd really recommend that you you try it for yourself. If I'd aged this a little bit, I'm sure it would have smoothed out um, even more. You could age this beer for I guess about five six years or something like that, probably even more. I'm not sure exactly, but I I really just wanted to try this one to be honest. And as it stands, as a fairly fresh beer, it is uh, pretty damn good I have to say. So um, yeah, the recommended on the back. I've just seen that here. This one is best before. May 2028 so I'm guessing you know they're saying that's about 10 years they recommend that you can age this one so really up to you guys what you want to do with it you probably can actually age this beer beyond that to be honest but um, yeah I just wanted to go at this one so there we are so yeah let's leave it at that for this this one was the Sticky Monkey 2018 vintage uh, a quadruple coming in or a, uh, how did they say a central coast quad coming in at 11.4% uh, from Firestone Walker Brewing Company in Paso Robles over in California. My very first American brewed quadruple that I've tried. I have tried one from Scotland, I think, and a few other places, the Netherlands, obviously, uh, and France, I think, too. Um, but yeah, my first American uh, brewed one. So do let me know in the comment section below if you have any other American quad recommendations. And triples as well. I do enjoy reviewing triples from, uh, from different places and Scotch ales as well. Although I love the big heavy beers like that. But yeah, thank you again for watching my beer reviews. As always, let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below and let me know what your favourite beers are from Farston Walker as well. I'm sure I'll return to this brewery in the near future. But thank you again for watching and I will catch you guys very soon. Make sure you check out my social media and if you can get a chance to have a try of this beer, I think you certainly will enjoy it. This one was the Sticky Monkey 2018 Vintage from Farston Walker Brewing Company over in Paso Robles in California. Beautiful, beautiful beer this one and a lovely American take on uh, a Belgian classic if you like. Slanja, Skull, Proust, Santé.